A triangle is a shape with three sides. Mario 64 is a game that is made of triangles. I am trying to make Mario 64 in Scratch, so the first step is to make a triangle. This challenge is going to be super hard. No, but actually, please watch the whole video. This is way harder than it sounds, I promise. First of all, if you haven't seen my last video, go watch it. If you have, then you will know that in order to make Mario 64 in Scratch, I need a renderer that can draw triangles in 3D space. To make a triangle using Scratch, your first thought might be to use a sprite and then move and rotate it. But this wouldn't work, because I need to make every possible triangle, and that would need way too many costumes, and I need to figure out which costume to switch to. That would be a mess. So instead, I'll try to do it with Scratch's pen add-on. In case you didn't know, Scratch has multiple add-ons that can let your projects do extra things, such as control a robot or get input from physical sensors. The only one of these add-ons I've used is the pen tool, and it's how I'm going to be drawing triangles. Here's how the pen works. You can use the pen down block to make a sprite leave a trail when it moves. You can then use the pen up block to stop drawing a trail. The pen tool also has blocks to let you change the pen's properties, such as its thickness or color. You can then use the erase all block to erase all the pen on the screen. Unfortunately, there is no way to erase just part of the screen with the pen tool. Now on to making triangles. The first thing I did was create a custom block called draw frame. This block will be called every frame and will be responsible for drawing the entire screen. I made sure to check the box labeled run without screen refresh. This box makes it so that when I use the custom block, it will do all the code under the block without updating the screen. Here's why this is important. Each frame, I'm going to erase the entire screen and then draw all the triangles. But if I try to do this normally, there is a small period of time where there is nothing on the screen. By erasing the screen and then drawing everything without updating the frame, the screen only updates once everything has been drawn, so the screen is never blank. The next thing I did was create a second custom block for drawing a single triangle, and I gave it six parameters for the x and y values of the triangle's three points. I also added an extra parameter for the triangle's color. Each time the draw frame block is called, it will draw the number of triangles equal to this slider variable. I started by tackling the simplest problem, the color. Scratch uses hue, saturation, and brightness for its colors. But even if I added three parameters for the color, there is no way I can use them to set the pen color directly. I looked it up and I found a way to convert hex values into Scratch pen color by doing this. Hex values have six numbers, two red, two green, and two blue. This means you can have only one number for the color and set the pen color directly to this number. The next step is to actually make a triangle. So we make the pen go to the three points and bam, we have ourselves a triangle. Video over. But we can't make a game out of these. The triangle has to be filled in and this is where the challenge begins. Here's the part of the video where I give a heads up that this video, as well as the next one, are going to be way more math oriented than in the intro video. Now that that's said, I hopped into Desmo's graphing calculator to start testing ideas. The first idea I had was to try drawing horizontal lines all the way down the triangle. I created this abomination of an equation that works, but I don't remember how I came up with it. All I know is that it moves one unit down along a certain line. After connecting two points on the edges, we get a line across the triangle. But this approach is hard to understand and will be even harder to put into Scratch. Also, I would need two different sets of lines because using only one would draw lines outside of the triangle. And I don't want to try to figure that out. So I came up with a much simpler idea. I could find all of the points on one of the edges and then connect them all to the opposite point. So I wrote an equation for moving one unit along a line, and then I put it into Scratch. I made it repeat over the whole length of the edge, and it worked great. I had made a triangle. But I didn't just make one triangle. I had made every triangle. I could make a triangle of any three points and any color. So I'm done, right? <laughs> no, not even close. Here's the problem. My triangle drawer works great, but it definitely can't run Mario 64. I added a triangles per frame slider and an FPS counter. The FPS counter uses the day since 2000 variable, which is the most accurate and consistent measure of time in Scratch. Day since 2000 uses real time to determine its value, 
whereas the timer variable lags with the project. After setting this up, I ran 100 triangles per frame and saw it was running at about 5 FPS. This is perfectly fine. I'm okay with my project running at 5 FPS as long as it works. But Mario 64 doesn't use 100 triangles. According to Google, the bob on Battlefield map has over 1200 triangles. So I put my project to 1200 triangles per frame and it ran at 0.2 frames per second. One frame every five seconds. Okay. Also, it doesn't generate all of the triangles at once. It generates them in chunks. Definitely not what I want. But why is it running so slowly? Scratch can do calculations very quickly, so it must be moving the pen that's slowing it down. Let's say the side length of each triangle is, on average, like 100 units. This means that the pen is going from a point on the line to the vertex and then back 100 times. That is 200 move functions per triangle. In order to generate 1200 triangles per frame, I'd need 240,000 move commands per frame. And in order to run that at 10 FPS, I'd need Scratch to complete 2.4 million move commands in one second. That is just unrealistic. Since I can run 100 triangles at about 5 FPS, I can move 20,000 times per frame, or about 100,000 move commands every second. That is very good, but it is still nowhere near 2.4 million. To run at 10 FPS, I need to generate 1,200 triangles using about 10,000 move commands, meaning each triangle can only have the pen move 8 times. A commenter on Scratch recommended that I use Turbo Warp, an online Scratch extension that can run Scratch projects faster. Turbo Warp can run a thousand triangles at almost four frames per second, but I want my game to be faster and not dependent on Turbo Warp. So I uploaded my triangle drawer and began on a new idea. For my next approach, I wanted to find a way to increase the pen size so that each move command filled more space. I came up with the idea of first drawing a large circle in the center of the triangle. Circles are very easy to draw with the pen, because just placing down the pen creates a circle where the pen size is the diameter. Filling in the center with one circle would use only one move command and would fill in over half of the triangle. Then I would draw larger and larger triangles using four move commands each, with each triangle having a smaller pen size until I've completely filled in the corners. The first step for this method is to find the center of the triangle. The first thing I tried was taking the average of all the points. But with certain triangles, you can see that drawing a circle centered on this point doesn't fill in the maximum amount of space. If you were to move the circle like this, now it cannot fill up any more space. Also notice that this circle touches all three edges. I thought of finding the center of the edges and connecting them to the opposite corners, but this just creates a different center that has the same problem. Neither of these are the center that I want. I looked up center of a triangle and found out that there are four different centers to a triangle. I found a video showcasing all four and how they're found geometrically. The center I want is called the in-center. The in-center is the same distance away from every side of the triangle. The in-center can be found by bisecting each of the triangle's angles and seeing where they intersect. The video shows how to find the center geometrically, but not mathematically. Instead of trying to write an equation myself, I looked online to see if anyone already had one. I found this equation, which uses the length of each side, and I'm not entirely sure how it works, but it does. Now we have the point at the center of the triangle. This is where the pen will move in scratch in order to place the circle but we still need to know the diameter of the circle that fits into the triangle. Instead of finding the diameter, it's easier to find the radius and then multiply it by two in scratch. The radius is just the distance from the in-center to the closest point on this line. I spent a long time trying to find the distance from the in-center of the triangle to its edge, but here's how I finally did it. This point is the one closest to the in-center, if I could find this point, I can use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the distance between them, which is the radius of the circle. Notice that if I draw a line that intersects both these points, it is perpendicular to the edge, or at a 90 degree angle. We now have two lines that intersect at the point we need, so we can create a system of equations and solve for the solution. 
To do this, we need to know the equations for both of these lines. To find these equations, I'll use point-slope form, which means all I need to know is the slope of the line and a point it passes through. For the edge, the slope is the change in y over the change in x, and we can use either of the triangle's vertices for the point. For the other line, we already know it passes through the in-center, so we just need to know the slope. And since we know this line is perpendicular to the edge, it means their slopes are opposite reciprocals. So this line's slope is negative 1 over the edge's slope. Now that we have both equations, we can set them equal to each other, and solving for x gives us this equation. This is equivalent to the x value of the point that we're looking for. Then to find the y value, we can plug this value into either of our equations, and we get out the point's y value. Now we can use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the distance between these points. We now have the radius of the inner circle. There's only one problem. If either line is perfectly vertical, the slopes can't be found because it divides by zero. To fix this, if the x values are the same, or when the line is vertical, I just set the slope to 99,999. I put in scratch, and after some corrections, it works. I made it draw the outside triangle and the big circle in the middle for a total of five move commands per triangle. And after an FPS check, we can see that it runs 200 triangles at 100 frames per second. That means it is doing 100,000 move commands per second, which is the same number we got earlier. The next step is to fill in these corners. I'll do this by making thick triangles that get thinner and thinner as they go out. I want the triangle to go as far into the corner as possible, but without leaving any gaps in the middle. When the pen moves in a straight line, its edges create two straight lines, and these lines are parallel. One of the lines is just the edge of the triangle, and the other edge marks what will be filled in. If you look at two movements of the pen and draw out the lines for the edge of the pen, you'll see that they intersect at two points. The first point is just the corner of the triangle and this other point changes based on the pen size. If the pen is too small, it fits into the corner more, but it leaves empty space here. The perfect size makes it so that the edges of the pen line up here on the edges of the in-center circle. Any larger would be wasting space in the corner. So the place I want to move the pen to is the point directly between these two points. The radius of the pen would just be the distance from this point to the edge. We can find this using the same approach we used for the in-center. But we can't find this point mathematically yet because we still need the equation for this point. This point is along a line that goes from the in-center to the corner of the triangle, and the radius of the circle is the distance from the in-center. At this point, I had completely forgotten about my original attempt at the equation to move along a line, so I made a completely different equation from scratch. Here's how I got it. So let's say we have a line, and the slope of this line is, say, 4. If we move one unit over and four units up, we have moved the square root of 17 total along this line. If we then divide all of the distance by the square root of 17, by moving one over the square root of 17 units over and four over the square root of 17 units up, we move one unit along the line. So to put this in equation form, we move x by one divided by the distance when we move over one unit and up the slope and we move the y by the slope divided by this value. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we see that this distance is the square root of the slope squared plus one. This equation is how we move one unit along a line. So to use this, we need to move radius units along this line. I can find the slope of this line using the slope equation and make sure to set the slope equal to 99999 if the x's are the same. Then I multiply the amount I move by the radius of the in-center circle, and I add the coordinates of the in-center to this new point. This gives us the point on the edge of the circle. Now back to our previous step, we move the pen between here and the corner, and set the radius equal to the distance to the edge of the triangle. We find this distance using the exact same approach from when we needed to know the distance from the in-center to the edge. After this, we need to move the pen into the other corners. We can't do the exact same thing we did for the first corner because the new corners would all have a different pen size. So instead, I'll take the point we have on the edge of the in-center circle and move over to find the other points. I notice that if I draw out the path of the pen, it makes a scaled down version of the same triangle. So to get the other points, I'll move over by the length of this edge divided by the size ratio of the two triangles. 
I can find this ratio by comparing the distance from the in center to the corner and the in center to this point. And after doing all of that, we've completed the second big step in making a triangle. This would fill the corners in part way, but not all the way. The way we get to fill in the rest of the corners is by repeating the last step, but moving farther out. I'm skimming over this step for the sake of time. This should all work now in theory, I just need to put it into scratch. Once I did that and fixed all the bugs, there was only one problem. There are gaps here, but they're only there sometimes. I know why this is happening. In my Desmos graph, it all works, but when I move one of the points away, we see the same gap. This is because it does the second step using point A every time, when sometimes it should be using point B or C. It always needs to use the point that is farthest from the end center. So in Scratch, I just added this piece of code that sets these variables to whichever point is farthest, and put them in where they're needed, and now it works perfectly. This triangle drawer can draw any triangle with any color. After running an FPS test, we can see that it runs 1,000 triangles per frame at about 5 frames per second. This is better than the first approach, even in Turbo Warp, and this new drawer in Turbo Warp can run 1,000 triangles at 100 FPS. Very cool. If you want to check out my Scratch project, I'll leave a link to it in the description. So that's how I made a triangle. There you go. That's all I've got for you today. But before you go, I've got some things to say. First of all, my last video did incredibly well. As of right now, it has almost 100,000 views, which is absolutely ridiculous, especially considering that it's my first real video. The amount of attention that it got is insane. The next step in Mario 64 is to make a 3D engine. So that's what I'll be working on next. That video though is probably gonna take even longer to come out than this one because school is starting and I'll have less time to edit. This video took a long time to come out just because of all the things I've got going on. Like I joined the marching band, so that took up a whole bunch of my time because guess what? YouTube isn't my first priority, deal with it. My original goal was to upload two or three videos this summer. I definitely did not hit that goal. I'm uploading the first video just before school starts back up again. To put it in perspective, I finished making the triangles five months ago, and since then it's just been me making the video. So, well that's it. That's, that's all I've got. You can leave now. Bye-bye. <laughs>